Hi, hey, hey, hello. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly. This is a show every seven days about Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega, and associated IP and interests, what have you. My name's Grant, and uh, we've got a great show for you this week. Lots to talk about. Keanu Reeves, Shadow, all sorts of stuff. Knuckles show. Let's meet everybody. Let's get into it. We're going to have a good time. Bo, how are you doing this week? Here we go, buddy. Hey, Shadow, don't make me upset. I don't want to hear you. No, I do want to hear you if you are Keanu Reeves. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this week we don't always have him, but uh, we're, we're delighted that he's joining the, the, the round table this week. It's Smoothies. Hi, Smoothies. Hey, I'm back. Uh, well, that's it, right? I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, that's all right. That's <laughs> fine. That's plenty. Uh, and then the star of the show, out from the shadows into the spotlight, it's David the Lurker. Hi, David. Whoa, yeah. Hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Hi, Smoothies. That's right. I am out of the shadow of Keanu Reeves, so I'm out of the Reeves, out of the Keanus. That, that That's a weird image to have, so let's pretend I didn't say that and, and just, be, just say, yeah, I'm excited for voices. And I know we've got a full house because it's not just the four of us. We are we are filling the house to a stretching breaking point. God. I think we have, you know, we're just we're pulling out an extra chair yeah. to the dining room. You know, we're sometimes those tables have like a like an extender. I, I think oh. the way David said it was just cool and normal. Let's just go with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's sure. Sure. I got all my words mixed up. I should have clearly opened the thesaurus <laughs> before I started recording today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we should go back. The table extender. I love that analogy. I really think it's cool when you have a table like that, right, where you slide it open. There's the extra chunk. I don't know where the extra chunk goes when you're not using it, I guess, in the closet. But when it's Thanksgiving. Hey, David, quick question. Yeah. Quick question. I, I think you were in the middle of introducing someone. Who was it? Oh, right. Hey, we... Uh, They've never been on the show, but I think they're a friend of the show by proxy. They're forced to be a friend of the show. That's right. Straight from FTCR is Mykonos fan. Hello. Oh, hey. Hi, I'm here. Oh, I was keeping quiet the whole time like a good, gracious <laughs> guest. <laughs> I was just listening the whole time like, oh, God, should I even laugh? I don't know. <laughs> my mental image was like, you know, when you got the extra person in the back of the car and they're just kind of sitting like I'd be on Steven or something. <laughs> but I remembered it's only four, so I wouldn't have to do that, but I'd like to. Uh, hi, uh, it's nice to be here. <laughs> hi, Mykonos fan. Is that is that uh, the right pronunciation of the that. screen name, Mykonos? Because I've seen your I've seen your posts on uh, you know Sonic Retro oh and have admired you in the written form, but this is our first time exchanging vocal tracks. It is, and you got it right. Unlike me for years, so hey, that's great. <laughs> they used to say Mykonos fan. It's it's that's incorrect. Actually. And I guess while we're on the subject of it, what what is that? What are you're a fan of? What is it? Is it you have a Konos or Mykonos is a person's name maybe, or it's a it's a show that I'm not familiar with, or what is Mykonos? Uh, basically, long story short, when I signed up for um Sonic Retro, my uh, old Chow focused username was um not good enough, so I had to come up with a new name because <laughs> it was too Sonic centric or something. So I was like, okay, well Sonic Unleashed came out like four months before that, and I really liked the first stage. Apidos, which is based on Mykonos, Greece. Oh. So I was like, you know what? That's clever. That's real smart. I'll just <laughs> go with that. And then at some point I added fan on because it was just the name of Mykonos. And <laughs> it's a really bad username, but it's kind of like way okay. too late to change it. So. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'd like to point out that I wasn't in charge of Retro at that point. Not that that's <laughs> yeah. What? much better now but you know <laughs> i'd love to blame you but i can't yeah <laughs> yeah we still can <laughs> okay what the heck david come on uh, chris you could have just said my parents let me name myself <laughs> <laughs> right well there's there's a there's a lot to get to really excited to have the full group together uh for listeners that don't know, uh, just really quick, uh, David, Smoothies, and Mykonos fan, you guys also do, you have a, a project called FTCR, Find the Computer Room, right? That it's you and somebody else as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, usually Stefan. It's a mummy that we kick around and we <laughs> upload like five times a year to it. It's great. It's usually about Sonic. When it's not about Sonic, no one pays attention, so we, we just stick to Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, let's get, let's get to Sonic, because the same is true for us. Uh, so, yeah. huge news this week for Sonic Movie 3, which is Keanu Reeves was officially announced. I guess officially. It was kind of leaked. It was, it was confirmed by the Hollywood uh, Reporter and by Variety and the, the different trades, Deadline, 
but it wasn't an announcement from Paramount. It wasn't sim- it wasn't like how they revealed Idris Elba with Knuckles with a poster and knock knock in the post copy. Like this was just like somebody leaked it, and then everyone was like, no, re- maybe Ooh, is, he, is it really? Because Keanu was one of the, we were talking about it last week of like Keanu, Robert Pattinson, and uh, Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen being the popular yeah. fan, yeah, being the popular fan uh, casting. So Keanu was always like, ah. and then they confirmed it. So it is. Legitimately true, and uh, so I guess my question is, I think what the listeners are going to want to know is, how do we feel about Keanu Reeves as Shadow the Hedgehog? Well, I, I, I reached out to number one Shadow fan, friend of the show, Donald, <sighs> and he sent me just his reaction. So the first text he sent is a picture of Keanu Reeves, and then all in caps. He didn't say who this is sent to, I presume. Uh, maybe his mom. He says, <laughs> until I hear his dulcet tones speak out of hedgehog lips, I have to try to be prepared that it could be an elaborate misunderstanding. Mm. But alleg- allegedly, Keanu is voicing Shadow. And then he said, my hype is so off the charts, I could go ho- climb some steep slopes and overcome some obstacles. And that's that's a reference to the uh, the white jungle lyrics that I made reference to earlier. Oh. Ah. In case you're not up on your Sonic Adventure 2 lyrics i'm not okay it ties into fearless year of shadow as well right just in general <laughs> that's right uh, we don't we we also got to talk about the shadow motorcycle uh but uh, all right one one more thing from donald which is that his hope for humanity is that shadow calls something or someone bogus <laughs> and his stretch goal for the movie is that the end credits is keanu doing stunts green screened over the movie's shadow action sequences <laughs> so i endorse that that's what i want i don't want a little, a little cartoon that recaps the whole movie that's been done i i want keanu doing the shadow moves <laughs> nice well thank you Bo. thank you donald for that uh insight into the the number one shadow fans reaction um, we'll I have to have donald on the show sometime um, right no, donald right he's uh is he still dating daisy or did that did it finally <laughs> end like every hollywood romance eventually does oh i, th- I think he, it was daisy he texted at first there oh okay. wow they're oh. still together that that's true love right there uh as far as keanu goes out of all the um the the fan speculated names mentioned before right like robert pattinson i'm like that's probably a good fit yeah and a good meme. Hayden Christensen, that's probably a good fit and a good meme. Keanu Reeves, I think I need to see the direction the movie will take. I imagine it'll be more comedically slanted like everything else in the Paramount Sonic universe, which means it'll probably work, but I just feel like I need to actually understand what they're doing first because it's like funny but i'm not like excited about it personally personally i've never seen a keanu reeves in a recording booth thing like he's it's always been a live action thing so i don't know what to expect from that mm. right what is what has he done his i mean he was in cyberpunk but i guess also his face was he's in there with idris elba yeah yeah yeah, yeah but that's true <laughs> but you know i mean outside of maybe oh he uh devil's advocate keanu reeves doesn't really change up his vocal delivery true. all that much he, it's usually yeah. pretty much the same i forgot he voiced he voiced uh himself or his character in the first season of bill and ted's the animated series oh, well there you go oh, thank <laughs> you and what, what what year was that from uh, david i mean it was like what 1990 or something <laughs> like okay great. he still sounds the same right yeah i'm pretty yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same <laughs> it's been pointed out a lot but in the first sonic movie sonic like calls out keanu reeves in a movie so i don't know if they're going to follow up on that or just kind of sidestep it <laughs> a national treasure yeah yeah okay that's a let, let's ask that question do you want sonic to be like hey you sound familiar kind of like keanu reeves from the movie <laughs> speed which i've referenced before or do you not want them to hang a lampshade on it Oh, Which would you prefer? It depends on what Shadow says. <laughs> I think you have to play Shadow just like deadly serious and straight. And then everything else can react around him. Okay. Right. Yeah. If, if Sonic makes a comment, Shadow shouldn't acknowledge it. I also feel like if you do that, though, like, are, would you just go all the way and then actually get Dwayne Johnson to be the president? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, he has to be in the limo, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that. Oh, yeah. Just him in a limo. Also pointed out on the internet this week was that Keanu Reeves, uh, you know, he was in, in that old meme of the poster with Danny DeVito as Robotnik. Oh, God. Vin Diesel as Knuckles and Steve B- 
Buscemi is Tails, <laughs> you gotta read through Sonic. Yeah. Right. So actually, actually, Donald, another thing he said was that that poster was the prophecy, and the prophecy is coming true. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Donald. It's sort of prophetic. I mean, it's still off. Like it gets one thing right out of five. <laughs> but still, Zippo would call that a win. That w- that oh, that's yeah. a win for Zippo. That's a- <laughs> Oh, I get it now. Hey. Sorry, Zippo. I don't know. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's not offended. Does he listen to this? I don't know. I can make him listen to it. <laughs> I don't know. Has Zippo ever played a Sonic game? Has Keanu Reeves ever played a Sonic game? Ooh, there's the question. That is a good, that is a good question. I mean, mm. Sega has been involved in the Matrix franchise right didn't they publish the the mmo that's right yeah although neo was dead in that so it's not like he was yeah, he, part of it no that wasn't the path of neo no wait yeah who published who uh who made the path of neo uh neo <laughs> right no who who made the game path of neo uh, like did say uh, uh, shiny entertainment and atari oh wow is who made am i mis- path of neo right am i misremembering did was sega involved in the uh, in the mmo whatever it was called uh no you're you're that's right okay that's right at least at least according to my memory uh, let's see if we <laughs> if wikipedia backs it up uh two two thoughts while we browse so one thought is that I bet there was a Sega Genesis in some movie trailer that he was on in the 90s, and he has probably played Sonic. And yes. number two, I remember reading this like fantastic narrative, we'll have to find it, of like when they decided to shut down the server for this MMO, mm-hmm. they told everybody, hey, this is going to happen, and the world is going to end. And it was kind of like a who can survive the longest because like these lightning bolts that had never been part of the game before like came down from the sky and started killing characters. Oh, cool. And so like people were like fleeing this lightning and like people are dropping like flies. But then there's like some people who are holding out and then like finally the last person goes down and then instead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The robots oh, wow. win. Did they incorporate Damn. that into the fourth movie? I never watched the fourth movie. Oh, they definitely did not. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, but they do. But they do because that's why Morpheus isn't in it. Because he dies in the video game universe. Yeah, but it, oh, I thought so it's the, a, in that it's way. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but didn't he also not actually die? Wasn't it a thing where like, oh, there's an event where he dies, and then later he comes back to life uh, in the video game? I like this part of the show where we just sort of kind of remember <laughs> tweets and we trade them back and forth. It's like I know, yeah, I think I know this, and it's like that's the that is the age of information. But yeah, that we live in. Thank you. Uh, we'll blame society instead of our our laziness. All right. I, Keanu Reeves must have played Sonic. He feels like somebody who would have played video games. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like if he got an iPhone and Sonic Dash was preloaded on it and he was like swiping around, he like yeah. accidentally opened it and went, What is this? And then like went to Instagram or whatever. <laughs> Right, he wandered into a micro center. <laughs> it's almost crazy that he wasn't in like a Sega commercial in the '90s because he was such the prototypical Sega hmm. like consumer like archetype. You know, like he like he's cool. He could he for for one thing he had the best whoa mm-hmm. like and you just <laughs> blow his hair back and then you have Sonic Three playing on a TV screen. <laughs> whoa. Right? Yeah. Right. Or like that's a commercial a, Sega Altered Beast or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I guess his career was probably a too good at the time and then during the slump sega wasn't as uh prevailing prevalent prevail you know the word and then and then when he he had his renaissance like sega was dying so i feel like it just <laughs> the stars didn't align for keanu to be the face of sega until now until now when could they have realistically gotten him david like would he be like oh clockwork night whoa <laughs> <Would that have laughs> been the time period? yeah that's that's what i'm thinking right like what, what was that movie he was in chain reaction nobody liked it um or nobody remembers it nobody cared i i remember it because i was watching something unrelated and i was like oh yeah that's a movie that's post speed like that was the speed follow-up that failed i think I, it doesn't matter no. keanu well <laughs> he must have played sonic by now right like even if he hadn't played sonic adventure 2 he probably had to play it to prepare for the role no, definitely not. <laughs> I think he, no, I think he had to go through the Knuckles paths in Sonic and Knuckles 
as just prep like oh man there's a lower route <laughs> i need to understand idris's motivation <laughs> yeah i don't know one of the other big pieces of news this week is that uh the knuckles series uh had the premiere party in london i mm-hmm. think it was uh and the episodes start airing uh next week right so we'll pretty soon on this show we'll start covering them you know one at a time but idris <laughs> idris did have a funny quote that i'm looking for uh where he was talking about the knuckles he was talking about sonic 3 and it just seems like he had no idea <laughs> he's like yeah there's gonna be a lot of easter eggs in it actually why don't i go to the actual news source and quote him properly too hard too hard because i don't know if i can find it <laughs> we've already time. established that we just vaguely remember things on this show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah he's like he's like oh yeah sonic 3 is gonna be for the hardcore sonic fans it's gonna have tons of easter eggs and all this great stuff in it and i was like oh he probably has as much idea of what is going on in the plot as ryan drummond knew about sonic adventure (laughs) like they probably just have like their sides and they don't necessarily know the whole story for a voice actor why would you necessarily need to have the whole script anyway you don't think they do a table read yeah they have to they might do a table read this is a proper hollywood production this isn't Sonic Team demanded that they hired somebody who looks like Sonic the Hedgehog to voice Sonic. God. The Hedgehog. Mm. <laughs> but if they did, oh man, yeah. So here's my question: Do we think that Keanu was originally going to be cast, or is he like a late-breaking addition? They're like, oh, this we want to put some more heft behind this movie, uh, pay off whoever it was before, and um, re- re-record. Because he is like the biggest star, right? Like, he's he's right. the most A-list star on in the cast now. Yeah. yeah. It would be hard to get more A-list. Like, yeah. what, Tom Cruise? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> well, that's who's going to be Silver, silver? Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See? Continuing so the obvious. trend of, like, lightly remembering things, I, it feels like, if I'm remembering right, you know, the scuttlebutt from uh, Insiders Whoa. was that there wasn't a shadow voice for a while. Like, even recently, I feel like I feel like this might be a recent thing. You think they were, like, trying to reel him in and yeah. finally did it? Maybe. Do you think that the fan casting influenced the producers at all? <laughs> no. You don't think so? Well, I don't know. Sorry. Maybe. Tyson's a producer, though. So yeah, he he is maybe he is. A producer. I guess it just it, rem, it it reminds me of um Christian Bale getting Batman for Batman Begins because that was another one where everybody wanted that after American Psycho on the message boards. It was like Christian Bale should be Batman, and then it was like the fans sort of willed it to happen. And I guess mm. just because it was such a popular fan casting, it almost feels that way, even though it may just be coincidence. And they just you know independently were like Keanu, he's just the right voice. He's got the right profile uh, in terms of like, I don't know. I don't know what, 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 what sort of factors go into that it's decision like, of like, well, he's, he's, he's very popular. So mm-hmm. you know, people who don't dads. know who's Sonic most, at all, he, are, they're going to come. Who's the most famous actor with a wooden delivery style that we can <laughs> yeah, get? Exactly. Do you, do you think G- Geoff K- Keneally uh, suggested it? <laughs> Is there a Ken Penders, Jeff Keeley? What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Ken Pen- Jeff, yeah. Oh yeah, Jeff Keeley was also in the news this week because he posted a shadow art that was made from AI. Oh, yeah, he was did. like, <laughs> you idiot, what are you doing? That's right, it had two mouths and many fingers. It was it was pretty good, pretty good. Um, glad, he's, glad he's just <sighs> being wild out there. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it could be like Keanu Reeves has, he is one of those people who's bridged because of uh, he, you know him being in cyberpunk him going out part of the video game awards show like hey look at me you're beautiful or whatever he said like he oh right yeah. i so it, it's probably they look at it and go oh it's, it's synergetic people still like him he's still successful um and age appropriate because shadow is uh <laughs> 50 so yeah i think it's just a lot of stars aligned, and I'm sure he's going to enjoy the paycheck he gets for being Shadow. Well, so. yeah, and it's it's interesting, too, because Keanu is not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's not part of the DC Cinematic Universe. He's kind of resisted those. He's had John Wick, his own franchise. Yeah. Uh, but this is his first time, I think, joining on like an IP franchise, and Shadow is a character that is probably not going to just be in this one movie. Probably, if there are more Sonic projects, Shadow will continue to be a part of it. So Keanu will be 
continuing to be a part of it. And it was surprising to me that when they announced the Knuckles show that Idris Elba, I was like, oh, wow, they've got, this is like, because I guess I'm just so used to like, when we were kids, it would, you know, it wouldn't be Bill Murray voicing <laughs> the Ghostbusters cartoon. Right. No. It would be Lorenzo Music. <laughs> right. And that was fine because he was also good, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. Jim Carrey didn't voice Ace Ventura or The Mask or his character from Dumb and Dumber yeah. in those animated shows everyone loved. <laughs> but it, I think those were also like 26 episodes for a season and Knuckles is six though, right? So it's the time commitment is less. It's also live action. Yeah. It's, it's using Wade. It's using many Whipples. Oh, uh, right. Wade. I wanted, since we got some movies here, I want to know how excited you are at the number of Whipples that are in the show because there was a behind the scenes interview clip. I didn't realize how many Whipples are in this show. Right. There's Wade Whipple. There's Mom Whipple. Uh-huh. There's <laughs> Uncle Whipple. And then there's Edie. Oh, God. How do you pronounce her name? Eddie? Eddie? Edie? Uh, S- Sister Whipple. Yeah, Sister Whipple. Yeah. Oh, be still my beating heart. There's so many Whipples. Right. They, it's the Wade show. You better not be playing with me. <laughs> right. And they all, all their first names start with W as well, right? Like that's, that's right. Like Wendy Whipple. Wendy. That's Sister, that's Sister Whipple. <laughs> Yeah, it's not even a joke, Chris. <laughs> and people don't want the human characters in these things. Can you believe it? They all those whipples. <laughs> That's the most exciting thing I've heard. Well, I got to get the free trial of Paramount Plus now. I mean, God, that's the whole family tree. <laughs> also, am I understanding it right that the Knuckles series is going to be in? Uh, the, it's six episodes, but each episode is an hour long. No, that's what they said. No. That's not true. Said there's, they 30. said there's three hours of content. And also oh. the the first leak that we got about episodes being one hour, mm-hmm. it says something like PT01H01M or something like that. To me, that says a time PT code. means yeah. pilot. Mm. And, and that means the pilot is one hour, but the rest of the episodes will probably be like 10 minutes so that you get that like, uh, no, 20 minutes so that you get that like three hours that they talked about previously. Mm-hmm. So I'm expecting a long pilot and then like 20 minute episodes after that. That's a lot less time for Whipples than I was previously excited for, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what they said, it's only three hours. Mm. I mean, <sighs> yeah. Okay. That, that, that makes more sense. Each episode is three hours, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> That makes more sense. 18 hours of Whipple. But there was that leak, uh, right? Like, I don't think I just made there that up. There were two leaks. That... There, there, there was one about the one hour, and that's how we... And then there was the leak okay. about the, the six episodes, and so people were like, oh, six hours. Oh, okay. But, but no, then they said it, there's only three hours worth of content, All so right, thank I'm God. pretty sure it's just mm. long pilot, and then... Yeah, mm. that makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense. Right. Uh, I'm looking forward to the show. I, I, how do you guys feel? Like, I feel like the fandom is like... A, well, God, I don't know. It's hard to like apply any sort of broad statement to a huge group of people, but uh, yeah. uh, just judging by Twitter, uh, it seems like kind of a mixed sort of uh, response on it. I've seen some very excited, like there was a clip released uh, today of Knuckles yeah. and the dog, mm-hmm. um, and there were some previous clips, and, and people are like really excited <laughs> about it, but I've also seen like the, you know, the contingent of Sonic fans that are like, this Knuckles is too stupid. He's too war. Like he can't tell the difference between a dog and a person. Like has he not <laughs> encountered a pet before? So I've seen some like negativity as well as people being like, "Oh my god, they're so perfect looking and so cute." Movie Knuckles is smarter than Game Knuckles at the moment. So <laughs> I, take what you can get, guys. Right, right. It's hard because I feel like the people who don't like the Paramount Sonic stuff are very vocal about it, right? And not that they shouldn't be, but also the people who really like it. I'm not sure if there's like a sense of irony there sometimes, because I feel like that's a little bit where it is for me sometimes, right? So I don't really have a good finger on the pulse of like, do people actually, are are people really actually excited for this? Or are we all just excited for like Wade Whipple, ironically? I'm not (laughs) not my finger on the pulse on where people are at with the Paramount stuff currently. Yeah. I feel like people generally like the second movie, right? It wasn't like a thing where people turned over time. Like, I think people still like it, so... Yeah. Uh-huh. Previously, Grant <laughs> yeah, has been upset right. about my comparisons with things to food. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I, I think I could compare this to going to a restaurant where it's like all the food is great, but every time you order, you don't get what you order. It's like I ordered Sonic, but then I got all this other shit, but the other <laughs> shit was pretty good. Uh, it's not what I wanted, but in the end, it's pretty good. I think that's like... A- a reasonably good analogy. You're talking about the wedding scene? Oh, yeah. I fucking love the wedding scene. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just making sure I'm tracking the metaphor. I think it's a reasonably good analogy. Like, I, th- I think my longstanding Sonic fandom gets me in the door for this series and, you know, like, the previous movies. 
got like I went to see them because I, I like Sonic. But my yeah. enjoyment of those things is like kind of divorced from my enjoyment of the games and other stuff because they're they're not that similar. No. Right. They they've become quite different, especially with how this Knuckles clip emphasizes that they are a family they are like the kids now of tom and maddie whereas in the first movie tom was kind of like a buddy Mm -hmm. to sonic like an older brother and then in the second movie one of the things that rubbed me a little bit the wrong way was the (laughs) sonic calling tom his dad at the end (laughs) yeah didn't love that part that i liked so much of movie two but i just real that one thing just sort of stuck but now it's but they're a family unit like that's just their dynamic does does Knuckles, though, think of himself as a son of Tom and Maddie and a sibling of Sonic and We're going to find out. Right. Yeah, probably not. I think that's the last episode. Right. Yeah. All I know yeah. is that this show is going to be weird, and I am 110% in for weird Sonic. Because yeah. when's the last time we got a really weird Sonic? You could argue maybe Sonic Boom, but Boom. Yeah. maybe like Underground is the last time we got a really weird <laughs> Sonic. So we're <laughs> overdue. <laughs> Luppy Luppy Weird. Man's right yeah. there. Great point. What, what's right there? Luppy, Luppy Man. Luppy Man. Yeah. Luppy, Luppy, <laughs> Luppy, Luppy Man? Luppy. What do you mean? You're asking when things got weird last. Well, I'm, oh. I'm trying to tell you it was 2006. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, right. I guess that, that was weird in, a, in its I own. I think the no, hog is weird. I think the storybook Smoothie, series is weird. Yeah, there's a lot of weirdness. And Smoothies, you got me excited when you were saying Luppy Luppy because I thought maybe it was confirmed that he was in uh, the Knuckles series. Oh. And I was like, oh, shit. Shit, that. And yes, David, great point. It is definitely weird, and and yeah, it is. A, you know, it's unique from the games, but it's. I'm excited. I'm. I don't know exactly what to expect, but I think it's going to be funny. They have good <laughs> uh, comedic talent involved behind the scenes. We know that uh, some. Of the, I forget all of the names, but we know that at least Yorma Tacone is one that I remember off the top of my head as being a director, and. I don't know. I remember looking at the I remember looking at the writers and directors at one point and being like, yeah, this is gonna be pretty funny. I could pull them up now. Not going to. We'll see when we get to there each episode. I'll say something mean. Sure. I know David and Smoothie's opinions. I don't know about Grant and Bo, you two. Um, this show will probably be more memorable than Sonic Prime, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, be yeah. mean, I'll say it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I I think I think both of them are going to hit different if you're seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. As the, you know, the parent of an almost seven year old, like Sonic Prime is a big hit. Oh. It's going to hit different it, whether or not your brain is fully developed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. You're going to have to. is not, but I can imagine <laughs> that if it were, then it would, it would feel different. But the, like the movies played really well to the kindergarten set. Yeah. I, I think the show might too. Okay. This is what, Right. So, so Modern Bo has seen how many different Sonic shows? Prime, you showed a bit of Sat AM, right? You've shown. Oh, we saw the whole the whole Sat AM run. I right. think we've seen everything but Adventures of. Okay. Mm. And I, I don't know if it's like the transfer they got onto streaming from like a VHS or something, but that show looks like <laughs> a thousand years old. Right. Yeah. I think it is something to do with the transfer. Quick note for the listener uh, Modern Bo is the name of Bo's son. Right. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, Mykonos fan and any listener who's like Modern Bo. What modern the hell Bo, does that right. mean? Yes. Well, modern Bo. Because you know how Modern Bo is the son of classic Sonic. Oh, right. right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how we're. That's uh, right. Well, because I'm just thinking. Don't think about it, basically. Right. Because once the Knuckles show is out and you've seen it, uh, you're gonna have to ask him to make a tier list of the Sonic show. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and I and I uh, when we've talked about the Sonic shows before and made tier lists of those, I like the comedic ones, and this is a comedy one. Sonic Prime was a more serious, dramatic one. This is clearly a comedy action adventure, but the comedy is very important. Uh, so Sonic Boom and Adventures of Sonic being the previous. Uh, and maybe Sonic Mania Adventures too. We'll toss that in as being like the comedic examples mm. uh, in the past. Those are those are some of my favorite ones. So I think it's gonna be, we're gonna cover it. We've already decided this, I guess. <laughs> Bo reminded us last week that we decided at some point many weeks ago that we're gonna cover each episode one at a time. <laughs> and I think that's fine, right? That that that'll be fun. Yeah, one a week. Yeah, because I don't. I, do they drop all at once? Yeah, I, I, that's what I that's heard. That's too bad. 
That's too bad. Because it is better. Don't you, don't, don't you think it's better when they like just do one at a time? It, it gets people more, you know, it becomes more of a conversation. It's, it's better for us in the content minds. <laughs> right. <laughs> I prefer the binge, but I like the conversation around weekly more, even if I'm not following the show. So I guess I'm a little conflicted, but I guess I'd pick weekly ultimately, right? Not just because it's the name of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, I like to, I like to spend less money. So I want that. I want it all at once and then I can cancel my subscription. Oh yeah. yeah. Also a fair point. Yeah. Well, you know, X-Men 97, I think that's coming out on a weekly drip and that's like the hottest show. So Knuckles could be the hottest show. No. (laughs) Everyone Um, could go right from X-Men to Knuckles. Right. Direct competition. (laughs) Smoothies, you you can write it off as a business expense for this podcast. (laughs) That's true. I think that does work. The IRS would be fine with that. Right. Yeah. Very understanding. They're like, oh, it's for Sonic Weekly. Okay. Say no more, Smoothies. Yeah. yeah. Why not? (laughs) Well, why not? Society's collapsing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, heck. Oh, heck. But what's, you know, what's not collapsing? Our love of sonic the hedgehog that we have expressed oh. over many years online and in person and what a good segue into you know talking about how these things hit different when you're seven uh you know we mentioned before that we we've we've all been in the sonic community for a while and i think one of the fun things about the movies and these shows and things being that i'm not a parent but it is apparent to me <laughs> that there's multiple Sonic generations out here. And it's fun to see, you know, the Gen Z takes versus the Gen X takes, the millennial, the whoever, like the kid, like there's a lot of different ways to appreciate Sonic. And I kind of like seeing that play out in very stupid Twitter drama. <laughs> but I watch sort of passively, you know, with the popcorn and, and enjoy it. But um I don't know. I guess I wanted to like use this as a segue to talk about the community aspect of it. You guys are the stewards of Sonic Retro, and and we've got our Discord server. We've talked about the GHZ before. There's a lot of different like communities of Sonic that have you know yielded long lasting friendships. We and so on. But how do you think maybe it has changed because of new younger people, also new projects, also things like the movies, also things like social media. Basically, if you could just condense. All the history of the last 30 <laughs> years into a quick little soundbite that smoothies can edit down. That would be great. Yeah, Chris, if you could just do that, it'd be really great. <laughs> right, you could put it on the socials. Well, it all started with a sonic boom when uh, someone went to Usenet and said, why is Labyrinth Zone so bad in 1991? <laughs> and from there, the reverberations are still felt to this day. God, Everything right. that changes stays the same. I can't believe somebody <laughs> complained about it back in 91. It ruins my entire <laughs> argument about why Labyrinth Zone is so great for the time. So yeah, they beat you to it. David, yeah. I just realized, I think, do you have, well, okay, quick mm-hmm. question. Do you have any tattoos, David? Do you have tattoos? Uh, Not at the moment. Okay, yeah, me either. I think we should get matching tattoos, all of us, <laughs> and uh, and Chris, uh, or Mykonos fan, you too, yeah. and, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and dear listener, you as well. Uh, we're all going to get matching tattoos of the first Usenet post's about Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> on our backs. Oh, okay. Or chest. Right. That I'm, turned very cult sounding very quickly. I think right. once the listener got involved, I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> now, I, now this is weird. I do know someone. I used to be on a different podcast called The Opinion Zone. Oh. And the guy who ran it, Jamie Eggman, <laughs> which is his last name, he changed it. Uh, what? He got the <laughs> Sonic Show logo tattooed on him because it was his. And then oh, and oh. then, and then he, gave, he gave it up to somebody else. <laughs> And it's like, oh, but he oh, still has, he still got that tattoo. The Sonic show is the one with the raccoon, the talking raccoon. The to- yes, the yeah. raccoon guy. But that that that's not where the Sonic show came from. It was it has was, he gone wow. back to get a raccoon tattoo under it to like honor the new legacy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't a know. raccoon tattoo. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this this came to my mind just because like I know you guys have all basically been around for a long time in various ways right like i got in with the chow scene in 2007 Mm -hmm. and joined retro in like march 2009 right and i was like 15 you know a little baby and by then the sonic community felt like very storied like i felt like i was getting on late (laughs) to the sonic community and then i looked up today trying to think of like what to come here and talk about and i was like oh god that was 2009 it is 2024 yeah this this series is so old now and it just got me thinking about like what was happening on retro when i joined because that was the project needle mouse year which eventually led to three separate multi-hundred page threads complaining about sonic 4 as it leaked through partner net and got delayed 
And then it got me thinking about how social media drained a lot of people out of Sonic communities, right? You know, these days, without even thinking about it, I see debates about quill length of the Sonic model, and I roll my <laughs> eyes, but then I'm like, no, this is exactly what happened when I got into this community. Nothing changed. People just <laughs> got meaner, maybe, but, you know, that's, that's a Twitter thing, I guess. But I, I was just sitting and thinking on it, and I was like, man, like... Things feel different, but when you really get down to the brass tacks, it really is just a lot of arguing over things that matter, but also don't matter. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that might be the same in every fan base. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And no. Yes, but also no. Right. Well, because I, <laughs> I looked up, I was, uh, I forget what I was looking for, but I was looking at old Usenet from the 80s and I was finding people bitching about Return of the Jedi mm -hmm. in 1983 and talking about how terrible the Ewoks were and, and like why <laughs> like the like you've ruined this. Yeah. There's also a very infamous Star Wars fanzine that came out after Empire where they basically went Empire Strikes Back has ruined the threat the Star Wars and has made Oh my god. And it's like oh. you, you think about I mean Star Wars fandom is a whole other kettle of fish, but I think there are some comparisons there. Yeah. With Sonic like like that really is just sort of what fandom has been. It's just as the internet has grown and you know more people are able to talk all the time, it, it's a lot easier to see that discor discourse and sharp focus, especially when it is partially anonymous. And incentivized. Right. Like if you got together with people at a convention like in 1992 and you were talking about star wars or let's say you're talking about sonic one versus sonic two you probably <laughs> would be nicer because you're in person but like it it, it is just a, a cycle that goes on forever and it, it's been there it's been there in, in the fandom like you you can follow the 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 lines like it's the funny you talk about the cycles because mm -hmm. I think earlier today I was browsing YouTube and there was a splash dash video that was observing the the thing of like Sonic Mania. Some people are like saying that now that it's been enough time that Sonic Mania's come out, it's it gets reappraised mm. and is like, oh, is it basically it's always the reverse, right? Like if something comes out and is beloved at first, like Sonic Mania or Sonic Colors, then over time mm -hmm. people are like, eh, maybe it wasn't that good, you know? Maybe it's kind of. <laughs> and then the ones that are kind of like shat on at the time later on, people are like, you know, Unleashed is actually really good, and right. like oh, six, <laughs> it's not finished, but like there's like some good ideas there, <laughs> and uh, and it's it's predictable is the thing is that you can like people were calling it at the time when mania was coming out in 2017 of like watch you know five you know sometimes gonna go by some years and uh people are gonna be like yeah maybe this wasn't that good and that's what happened just a fan game just a fan game recycled <laughs> levels old ideas you know kind of a thin story doesn't end really anywhere uh is too connected to sonic forces to be enjoyed independently sonic knuckles they're kind of annoyingly the wrong color <laughs> <laughs> the one i saw recently that got me was like it's hard to be well maybe recently a couple months ago i just saw someone expressing this somewhere so this is the one-off person i don't even think this is like a commonly held opinion but they were like it's really hard to be excited about mania when all the fan projects are so good these days and i'm like what what why does that have to put mania down though what are you saying yeah that's... opinions go weird over time right it's just very strange to look at how when everyone likes something, they get it out of their systems and quiet down, and that leaves space for people who don't like it to speak up, and then that feels like the majority opinion for a while, right? These ebbs and flows. Except on YouTube. Except on YouTube, right? There's always incentive to just say the mean, horrible things again over and over on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's also the desire to just sort of fill the void with like, hey, let's talk about Sonic. I don't know what to say. Let's figure it out. Uh, what else? What else hasn't been said about Sonic? Sonic Weekly. Exactly. Here's four screenshots of Sonic Unleashed. Doesn't it look good? Mm -hmm. A retweet. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Sonic Unleashed like... was better on the Wii. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, God. You know, you, yeah, <laughs> you could just say anything, as it turns out. Actually, I've been playing Sonic Unleashed on the Wii. We can, we can get into that at some point. I've been playing Sonic Unleashed on the PS3 and on the Wii. I dislike Ooh. it. It's one of my least favorite Sonic games. Fuck you. We can... but... <laughs> but, but, there's, there's no but. Fuck you. Eat my ass movies. It's a, it, he controls like a, like a shopping cart on a rocket. Like it's <laughs> That's... awful. It feels terrible to move. Hey, you know, the first time you don't, you don't remember this grant, but the first time you what? went through that loop to loop in Sonic Adventure one, yeah. you, you fell out of it and went into the ocean, but you don't remember it. 
And now you know to to use the control stick in just the precise way to get through that loop-to-loop yeah. in Emerald Coast, and you know it, how to get through it's it. It's frustrating because you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know how to play Unleashed. Yeah. I was looking at old reviews, and, and some people at the time thought that the Wii slash PS2 version was better. And I can kind of see the point because it's less annoying in some ways. Like, there's less, like, fetch quests, and you can just sort of, like, skip and just get to the levels. That is kind of nice uh and there's no like sky chase and stuff but of course obviously the hd ps3 360 also i gotta you know underline this point for you smoothies just for your benefit which is i am playing <laughs> on ps3 the worst way to play it like this the frame rate is awful yeah in, in hub worlds yeah, so weird. being so i think my opinion of it would probably be higher on xbox than it is on playstation 3 but right now i just find it tedious and annoying but yeah you can say anything um but obviously there's tons of people who love unleashed you know like unleashed is now like i don't know what unleashed is considered is it considered a bad game because of its metacritic or is it considered a good game because if you look at twitter or if you say then you get a fuck you from smoothies <laughs> if you just right. say oh it's a bad game because it, look at the metacritic i would argue it's a seven out of ten yeah whoa, whoa. seven <laughs> yeah i mean i'm not gonna argue that i think like there's brief bits of genius in it surrounded by just like a whole lot of awful stuff like the main daylight boost stages once you know how to play them are really cool and really well put together but until you are really good at boosting over water and not dying 40 times in a row yeah you're not going to know that and i think it does like channel some of the original 16-bit sonic spirit like most people when they first start playing sonic are really bad and that was a really cool way of trying to bring it into 3d again and if they'd worked on it a little bit more iterated on it a little bit more could have been great but like they paired it with this awful overworld in the hd version and these like endless mass of werehog stages in the in the wii version and the overall package I, it's hard to even say is it a seven or is it a six or whatever because you've got like an awesome part and a terrible part yeah I yeah, I love Unleashed because, like, no matter who talks about it and no matter what they say about it, I'm like, yeah, you're right, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most, like, 5 out of 10 game that I feel, like, 7 or 8 out of 10 on, right? Because, like, I like the hub worlds. I like the atmosphere. I like all the yeah. weird little characters in it. Like, it doesn't matter. I get why people don't like that stuff, but I do, right? I so, for me, it's like, oh, this is frustrating. If you try and, like, 100% Unleashed, it gets way more frustrating. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Some of those side stages are just bulb poopy but the dlc <laughs> did you pay for the dlc i bought every pack especially because one of them contained um like a covert patch for the main game right like it what? updated oh. the visual assets or something that's buy... right yeah oh. yeah huh so you're darn right i did <laughs> well i don't remember that wow yeah david uh, <laughs> i know something you don't <laughs> it's easy to see why people like Unleashed or, or love Unleashed or really go to bat for Unleashed because it is like it's the most hardcore Sonic game. It's difficult, but it, there's like a you know there's the XP. It's not easy out the gate, so it's like you just said. Whereas something like Sonic Forces is the complete opposite, oh, where man. that's trying to be like baby Sonic. You know, it's trying to be like this is going to be really easy. You're not going to have a problem. You get to make your own character, and then Sonic Unleashed is the like you know this is the Xbox. It's the, it's the, you know, it's the God of War gameplay with, uh, <laughs> you know, reinvented, um, but it, it's, it, yeah, when it sings, it really sings, mm -hmm. but didn't, um, there was a recent yeah. interview with Izuka who he said, um, yeah, Unleashed was a part of that, like Sonic has no identity. That's right. Uh, freight, uh, era. Right. I guess that would be the end of that era because he came yeah. in and clamped down. That's not the modern era. That's the no identity era. Right. So that, oh, that that's no what we can call it. Right. So that would <laughs> <Yeah>. be from <laughs> 06 to 08, basically just two years. Because <laughs> before that, I mean, Azuka directed Adventure 2 and Heroes and right. Shadow. And Shadow. Wrote the scripts to Rivals 1 and 2. Like, he, he's the writer on those games. Uh, it's all like that's all Azuka, mm -hmm. but wait, so he's using silver even though he had nothing to do with those six. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but he he takes you know he takes one couple years off of the his hand off of the wheel, and then you get such a diverse array of interpretations of Sonic with the storybook. Oh right, I guess Black Knight would be the last yeah. gasp. Yeah, and I, and I forces. 
<laughs> oh, I was I was gonna well, go on. steer us away, David. What are you saying? <laughs> no, I was just well, I was gonna be like, oh, unleash. Kind of, I mean, that feels like a turning point, and I was gonna sort of tie it back to the different eras of of the fandom because it definitely is like yes, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you were gonna say something that also leads in that direction, go ahead. Oh, baby. Well, yeah. forces was mentioned, and it just made me think of also like mm-hmm. in a way. That was a smack dab of the middle of like a very trying period to be in this fan base. At least as like yeah. someone talking about Sonic on the internet for like YouTube purposes, at least. You know, the surrounding years were like the boom sub franchise, right? Which most of that, you know, if you're like a gaming channel like FTCR or whatever, you can't cover the comics or the show really that well, right? So you just have a lot of games you can't record because they're on 3DS. So you're like, well, there's a rise of Lyric. <laughs> <laughs> so from Sonic Lost World to Sonic Forces, there were probably games I'm forgetting. And then from Sonic Forces, you know, Mania's in there, obviously. Then on the Frontiers, you know, it was Team Sonic Racing and, like, more mobile games. And it just yeah. really dawns on me sometimes that for, like, eight or nine years, we were all just kind of <laughs> trucking along here and going, like, huh, what's up with this franchise? <laughs> what's going on here? And I remember when Forces come out, you'd see people being like, man, I'm done with Sonic. Like, this is what I yeah. waited four years for. Like, I am out. I was kind of there myself. That was me. I felt like everyone was just angry and upset, and I yeah. get it. <laughs> so these days, it feels nicer because we actually get things kind of routinely, even if they aren't always great. There's at least something Sonic happening. This is like the peak time to be interested in Sonic. Movie franchise, TV shows, games are good. IDW is still going, doing whatever it's doing. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty much cooking on all like cylinders. Yeah. That's the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool and normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a car reference. We know cars. We've driven them. <laughs> and cooking. We also know how that works. Uh, uh, occasionally. Because that involves cylinders. <laughs> anyway. Huh. I call it the Tyson era because I feel like things got good when Tyson got involved. Uh, mm. He just took over the entire franchise single handedly. Yeah. Which is, it's funny to think about. It does feel like the figureheads, at least, are what people will like point to or blame, right? Like now everything that happens, some people are like, oh, Ian ruined another thing. Great. Thanks, <laughs> Ian Flynn. Hashtag knowing smile. <laughs> like, wait, how was it his? What? <laughs> Oh, he programmed the game. That's a great point. Yeah. No, they, man, people turned on Ian so fast. It was like, oh, my God, Ian's got to write for the games. Let Ian write for the games. What are you guys doing? Get Ian into the games. Let Ian write for the games. Ian writes for the games. <laughs> oh, my God. Here goes Ian with the games again. Always referencing. Oh, my God, Ian. Here we go. Jesus Christ, Ian. Uh, yeah, Ian were upset about Dream Team, but it's like but he, he was just there to glue things together. Like it, it, it was hard light who came up with the ideas and Ian was just hired to glue. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, Ian hasn't conceived, as far as we know, a game story from the ground up. No, like, he, he like, does suggest things. It's probably that one guy who lives in Japan, whose name I don't remember, that's oh, actually... Oh, Hitaro Toyota? Yeah. Is, he's the one that, like, wrote the wallpaper stories, and, like, he's sort of the yeah head of story. It, like, I guess if you don't like the stories, you can blame him. Be angry at this man. He probably doesn't have Twitter, so it's a lot better. You can just be angry at him. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, like back in the day when people were getting mad at, at heroes and Shadow, and they're like, oh, this is Naka's fault. And it's like, well, no, that that's not Naka's <laughs> fault. That's probably more Azuka's fault. But even then, is it really Azuka's fault? And then, you know, and then it, and then it was like, oh, wow, Lost World and Force, this is all Azuka's fault. And it's like, well, it's not. that's not really Azuka's fault. That might be somebody else's fault. It's it's No one's ever blamed properly. When somebody's like, I don't, I don't like this thing. Here's a question for the group uh, to sort of tie things together. What's something that your favorite thing about the fandom and your least favorite thing about the fandom? Oh, thing I've been thinking this whole time is the sort of satellite communities or the satellite fandoms. So you'll get people who are into, say, the Sega Saturn people I've been hanging out who also just kind of happen to have encyclopedic knowledge of the Sonic series. <laughs> Like, their primary thing isn't hanging out on Sonic forums, but, like, they know about Sega Sonic Arcade, and they know about Sonic Eraser. That sounds healthier. (laughs) I I kind of envy that, yeah. Another thing is, like, when I was a kid, like, there was also, like, the the Nights into Dreams fandom, which is, I don't know, kind of the girls who were into Nightmare Before Christmas really liked Nights into Dreams. (laughs) And so they had their own kind of thing going on, but, like, all their fan fiction involved Sonic, too. Yeah, 
I, 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 I'm interested in it uh, in terms of how it combines with other stuff. All right. Were, weren't there some GHC fanfics involving Knights and Sonic? Yeah. Talking ancient, ancient tomes. I, there's even two Burning Rangers fanfics, although I don't know if any of them featured Sonic. Oh. One was written by a friend of the show, Michael, and it was kind of a meta parody of like the Burning Rangers breaking into Sega's office. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm taking notes for everyone. So, Bo, your your favorite thing about the fandom is the fanfics. You like the crossover <laughs> fanfics. That's what I'm writing yeah. down for Bo. Favorite thing? Uh, an easy one for favorite is just all the fan projects, right? Like, I think it's taken for granted. Like, when a new Sonic thing comes out and it needs fixed, people are just like, oh, the modders will do it. And it kind of gets, you know, maybe a little... Uh, <laughs> reductive that way and then they do yeah <laughs> yeah but they always do come through and it's like all the fan games and projects and soundtracks and this and that's and mods and fixes right there's so many people in the sonic that you can just kind of expect something to someone to do something at some point that's good yeah with something right like there's just always something cool coming out so that's a pretty easy answer for what i love about it um i love the friendships i've gotten through I've known David and this movies for like a decade now, like almost a decade for David, right? Yeah. And like if you go for like Skylar, the Totino Pope, I don't even know when I met Skylar, but <laughs> definitely more than a decade he, ago. He's existed right? since time in memoriam, I believe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the other month, I was like, I don't know when I met Skylar. It just kind of feels like he's always been around <laughs> somehow. <laughs> but, you know, like I've met like really wonderful people who I like rely and count on, right? through sonic like so much of what i do yeah. now is just from being in the sonic and having to uh, meet people along the way so that's tied for my favorite yeah um, if i were to keep dominating this conversation i think my least favorite actually is probably those satellite communities kind of <laughs> going away as everything drained into the three big sites right like they're still out there but it's so much harder it feels like to find them and get into them you know yeah, I, I think of it just in terms of this, because, again, I've mentioned like I got it into all of this from chow forums, because why wouldn't you do that when you first get Internet access? Go look up the SA2 chow system in 2007. But, you know, there were a lot of chow forums in the 2000s and a bunch of really cool people out there. And there's just I, I think chow Island still goes amazingly, but it does. Yeah, everything else, you know, died off and everyone got natural lives and left. It's kind of sad. I don't know. The settlement continues to thrive. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wish we could all get off the three main websites, I think. I think people yeah. would be nicer to each other if there were smaller communities and not just a bunch of faceless people. How many websites will solve this? How many websites? 20? Um, <laughs> you need like 300. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I, I get that because when I think about old Sonic and old internet, you know, like, oh, the first Sonic website... I guess was the Sonic section on rat.org. But then there were like lots of like you would go and there'd be a list. Or here's the links for 15 other websites and you go there and they're all Sonic and they might have a, a link page that 10 of the links are the same. But oh, here's a couple new and random ones like, oh, here's the Freedom Fighter news. Here's Sonic HQ. Oh, this is Sonic Fan Games mm -hmm. HQ. All the stuff with SSRG. What about Nuxcom? What about uh, Team Artail? What about, uh, right. you know, the Sonic Foundation? We can just keep on going. David, what? Um, There's too many words. What? <laughs> South, <laughs> South Island. That was mine. South Right. Like you just think about there were so many websites. And even if a lot of those communities did have a lot of people that were shared in between them, like, oh, this guy posts on 20 forums. But it, <laughs> it, still, it, it still was, like, unique and individual, and it reflected, like, the people behind it. A, a fan site reflected the person who made the site, and they sort of became the anchor right. of a mini community that was part of a larger community. And you don't have that anymore now it's like you center around like oh my favorite screaming youtuber or very <laughs> upset sonic tuber right? Right. And you just kind of gather in their fan base God. and their tweets and i guess that's yeah. a the modern equivalent i somehow? guess or, yeah. or their discord <laughs> server you know right and there's yeah, I guess a, discord yeah. is a close approximation in a way right? yeah i yeah. think that's the best analog for right. the old days yeah because we do I have agree. i mean there's plenty of mini ones I know, like, yeah. hey, FTCR has a server. Sonic Weekly has a server, which you can get to if you email sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com and ask for that link. Uh, but, oh. you know, <laughs> Chris, you you have your own Discord server. That's where you talk about being Chris. 
Yeah, it's it's a place of worship, and everyone <laughs> comes to every Sunday, and they're like, "Oh my, it's you!" And I'm like, "Yes, it is actually." But yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of little things like that. You know, some friends will make little, basically group DMs, but it's a server, right? Yeah, I'm in one for Digimon Virtual Pets. That's a pretty cool Whoa. one. Whoa, um, okay. You know, there's some stuff out there like that. Uh, there's a different conversation to be had about all that information gathering up in Discord servers and not getting out into the World Wide Web, but that's been well talked about i'm sure but mm. yeah it's something you know yeah. these things still happen they still manifest it's just uh the mysticism is gone a little bit i think because everything yeah um kind of that makes sense whatever eyes right just kind of <laughs> congealed together into the main applications and sites right yeah no it's it's yeah it's you could say that like the fan sites before was kind of an influencer thing and then now it's you know, you're in the Discord server of a tuber or a podcast or in the replies of a... It's different. But either way, I mean, you're ultimately just exchanging messages with people, however, like, the format is. It's just that some of them are, like, you know, more conducive to a coherent conversation, <laughs> which I think Discord right. is good for. And then being in the replies is kind of just, like, yelling a bunch. But Smoothies, what do you think? What uh, Did you... Have you offered your two rings? I have not offered my two rings. Um, the We're talking about my likes and dislikes about the Sonic community. I'm an ant, so, like, give me a little trail of sugar. <laughs> if you're not offering, like, some, suc some suc sucrose, like, I don't care. Hmm. Give me the information. That's why I like David and Chris so much, because they have, like, Sonic info. Wait, you mean you like that we're just walking wikis? So in this in this metaphor, suc sucrose is, is information. Yeah, facts. Like, like just give, give me facts. Like, I'm num 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 num. That's, that's me. I'm, I'm, okay. a, right. I'm just an ant. Okay. I'm just a little insect. I'm just a little guy. So, you, could, you could squish me easily. I somehow I don't fully comprehend you and have no idea what you're talking about. Just regurgitate into my mouth and then I'll be like, oh, I understand now. How do you feel about takes? How do you feel about opinions uh, rather than tidbits? Just tell me what to think. <laughs> okay. Look, okay. I'll spit the patch notes okay. for the new Sonic Forces update <laughs> speed game into your mouth yeah. and you can okay. be like, ah, yes, okay. Right. Armor Blaze is 2% faster and you'll be very happy. <laughs> I could read you the legal copy from the back of uh, the Sonic Riders box art. <laughs> Ooh, that's a rare fact. Yeah, let me go get it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good info all around. I like Sonic. What? That's what I like about this fandom. It's about Sonic, and Sonic is cool, and my friends are cool. But I'll, I'll throw in my two rings as well of yeah, favorite, yeah. least favorites oh, right. on the on the fandom. Favorite. I mean, well, first of all, just like acknowledging everything that's been said of like the creativity, the friendships, the connections, the different communities and the and the ways that it intersects and broadens out. Into different, all that's amazing, too. <laughs> and in addition to that, I like the agreement and the shared enthusiasm that this is cool and interesting and worth talking about. Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> I like when you're just sort of sharing enthusiasm and you're swimming in the same direction of like this is like you're that's great. Like an ant. <laughs> like an ant. I dislike when there's, uh, <laughs> not just the, when, when the disagreement becomes like, like a problem. Like that's, that annoys me when it's like, as though, as though you think the wrong thing. I get annoyed when people are like, you know, this is the standard sonic opinion. And then you don't deviate from that. Like the tier lists mm -hmm. that are going around now, that gets annoying to me. It's like, it's more of just like, oh, it's interesting that you like this about this. I like this about that. Wahoo. Lots of different things to like. Yippity doo. Uh, and it's annoying when it's like, how dare you like <laughs> Sonic Lost World or whatever. Well, I, I might agree with that one. How dare you? <laughs> we we still need smoothies to edit this. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what I like? I like the fact that I'm hitting play. Oh yeah, that means I can hear the smooth, smooth song because it reminds me of what I really enjoy when it comes to the fandom, when it comes to Sonic, when it comes to us on this planet that we call Earth. It's that we're able to share together. We can share in love, in joy, and of course sharing in the fact that we've listened to another episode. <laughs> Of Sonic Weekly. That's right, the podcast that's now coming to a close. We got to thank, of course, our guest, Mykonos fan, who, uh, for, for joining us, for, for stepping over from the FTCR lines well, hey. into the weekly lines. 
There's stuff in the description if you want to understand more about Mykonos. <laughs> if you understand. want to understand. <laughs> Yeah, you know. See my brand, bro. You can really like get into it with me. You can join my server and worship me on Sundays. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Just do the cool and normal thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if you haven't already, you should, of course, subscribe to this podcast using your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, the only open source podcast source that we trust. Um, but if you don't trust podcatchers at all, and you know, maybe I don't blame you. You can also subscribe on YouTube. It's at Sonic Dash Weekly. Uh, remember the ad and the dash. And uh, you can see, you can hear us and also see gameplay footage put together by Jack of Old Games. That's right. Get in contact with us from the email I mentioned earlier, sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know your Sonic takes. Um, is that pan coin thing still happening did we <laughs> oh yeah uh smoothies all right uh congrats pig dan yeah uh, apparently codes are not uh they don't they don't go to mm-hmm. other countries it's just the u.s and canada yeah uh, we tried we tried we, thank- we tried yeah it was a nice thought smoothies and it was a, it was a good gesture thank you big smile for pointing out that we can't actually give it out internationally thank you and congratulations pig dan yeah. for taking us up on the <laughs> offer oh uh, yeah oh, pig dan thank you uh and and uh hey there's technically a twitter at sonic weekly sometimes it, it, it works uh <laughs> <laughs> hey and yeah if you want to get into our discord server send us an email ask for the link you can talk to some like-minded sonic the hedgehog fans gotta thank of course smoothies for the edit and thank you Grant and Bo, as this song ends and is over, because you're the ones who keep this train toot toot tooting along. Toot toot, Sonic Warrior. I guess that's. <laughs>